Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are bringing you another Lightboard lesson video. Today we're going to talk about TLS Cypher Suites and which ones are strong and which ones are maybe a little bit weaker. Uh, we did a previous Lightboard lesson video on TLS Cypher Suites in general, so if you haven't checked that out, maybe watch that first and then you can uh, get into today. So um, when you're configuring your web server, web applications, uh, and, or, or maybe specifically with the F5, the big IP, you got a lot to choose from. Uh, so the question is, which ones do you uh, stay away from? Which ones should you choose? Uh, so just to give you an example, on Big IP version 11.6, there's like 73 different Cypher suites that come preloaded on that, you know, on that version of Big IP. Uh, there's 69 Cypher suites on version 12. Version 13, there's 68. So the point is, there's a whole lot of these to choose from, which ones are good, which ones are bad. Um, by the way, I would note as well, specifically on the F5 Big IP, Depending on what hardware platform you use, uh, some of these Cypher suites are hardware, hardware accelerated. Uh, as you well know, uh, or probably know, a lot of these cryptography computations get really expensive from like a CPU perspective. You know, it's hard to chunk through all these different numbers and formulas and all that. So some of the hardware on the Big IP will accelerate the, uh, the crypto you know, computations that, that have to take place here. So it's kind of cool that you've got that hardware support on some of these. I can link to some of the specifics on which ones are hardware accelerated and which ones are not. Um, but as far as TLS Cypher Suites go, uh, from the perspective of strong versus weak, uh, I'm just gonna kinda go down the list here and we'll start with, uh, first of all, the protocol which is involved. So the protocol of the TLS version, um, I would say TLS 1.2, which is the uh, the most common, current, up-to-date one right now is the best one to use. Now, TLS 1.3, maybe I'll put a little parenthesis around TLS 1.3. Um, that one is coming. It has been uh, codified with an RFC, and it's becoming more and more, um, or it's going to be more and more pervasive. But as of today, this is early 2019, as of today, TLS 1.2 is like, the established, out there, um, everybody's using it kind of a thing. So I would say that is by far the preferred protocol. Um, so I'll put a little check next to that. I'll put a check next to TLS 1.3 as well, because when that one becomes more pervasive, that's the one that you're gonna wanna go to. Uh, TLS um, 1.1 is, I'm gonna put okay right here. It's not bad, but but if you're gonna use a, a protocol, TLS 1.2 is the preferred protocol to use. Uh, TLS 1.0, I'm going to put an X next to that, don't use that. Um, it's, uh, it's susceptible to a couple of things, the beast attack, it could be downgraded to like the poodle attack. Um, also PCI DSS credit card payments say that if you uh, do any kind of credit card transaction and you use TLS 1.0, they're not, they don't accept that. So PCI, PCI DSS would say don't use TLS 1.0. Um, and then also SSL V, I'm just going to put X, which would be V3 or V2. I'm going to put a big X next to that. So that's a do not use that um, next to any SSL version, uh, SSL V3 or V2. So from a protocol perspective, the bottom line is uh, go for TLS 1.2, 1.3 when it becomes more pervasive. Alrighty, so as we kind of step down the stack a little bit here, um, you've got the key exchange, so I'm going to put key exchange, and um, the Diffie-Hellman, so I'm going to put DH right there, Diffie-Hellman is the preferred key exchange, and more specifically, Diffie-Hellman ephemeral, and more specifically than that, the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman ephemeral. Sometimes you'll see this E in front of this uh, EC, so sometimes you'll see it E, E, C, D, H, um, sometimes you'll see it E, C, D, H, E, but as long as it has all of those letters, the elliptic curve, Diffie-Hellman ephemeral is the way to go. Um, that provides what's known as perfect forward secrecy, um, which that's the Diffie-Hellman ephemeral part. The elliptic curve part means that you can use much smaller key sizes and achieve the same level of security compared to like RSA, um, which would be the other key exchange. So I'm going to put a check next to that one. Um, RSA, basically, you should you should try to stay away from, from a key exchange perspective, uh, one, because it's more computationally expensive, you're going to have to have larger key sizes. Um, also, it does not achieve perfect forward secrecy, and perfect forward secret key exchange 
uh, is a requirement as TLS 1.3 comes on board. So key exchange, you're going, you're going to want to use the Diffie-Hellman uh, key exchange mechanism and pre preferably the ephemeral version and preferably the elliptic curve version of that as well. Alrighty, so for authentication, this is the server authentication. So I'll just put auth right there. Um, RSA is still good to use here. Uh, so I'll put a check mark next to that. The other, the other real option that you have here is elliptic curve digital signature algorithm, ECDSA. I'm gonna put okay next to that and then I'm gonna put slow next to that, which is interesting. Um, but for, uh, for signature verification, as it turns out, the uh, ECDSA is a little slower, or in some cases a lot slower, than RSA. And so for the authentication portion specifically, RSA is a little more preferred, mainly because it's a little quicker than DSA. Um, the, the, the nice thing about ECD, uh, ECDSA is that again, with the elliptic curve, uh, just in general, you can use smaller key sizes and achieve the same level of security. So actually, if you choose e ECDSA, you can have smaller key sizes than RSA, but you're gonna, you're gonna pay the price in terms of speed. So it kind of depends on which one you wanna go with there, speed versus um, you know, uh, key size kind of thing. So anyway, so that's authentication. RSA is probably the, uh, you know, what I would say is the preferred method there. As far as cipher, this is the block cipher. So the symmetric encryption cipher, uh, by far the preferred one is AES, the Advanced Encryption Standard. And I would say that the uh, Galois counter mode is good um, compared to the cipher block chaining mode, which I would say is okay uh, to possibly not good. Not good in the, in the sense that there's a thing called AEAD ciphers. Um, the uh, AAD is authenticated encryption with associated data, and Galois counter mode, AES, achieves that, while uh, cipher block chaining mode does not achieve that. Again, going back up here to TLS 1.3, AEAD ciphers are required for TLS 1.3. Uh, so perfect forward secret key exchange and AEAD ciphers are required for TLS 1.3. So again, as that comes on board, you're gonna need to be using this. Um, Frankly, a lot of the other types of symmetric encryption algorithms like uh, triple DES or RC4 or RC2 or others, I'm going to say no next to those. Those have been proven to either be very slow or susceptible to attack and you don't really want to use those. So, uh, so stay away from those. So basically the cipher is pretty easy. You want to use AES um, and more specifically AES with the Galois counter mode. Uh, the final one that I'll put, uh, maybe I'll put it right over here, is the uh, MAC, message authentication code, is uh, the, the thing that you're going to use there is SHA, the secure hash algorithm, and more specifically, SHA-256, um, or you can bump it up a little bit and do SHA-384. Um, the other options there are SHA-1, so SHA... Uh, one, but I'm going to say no on that one, as well as MD5 and MD2. This is the message digest version 5, version 2 kind of thing. Uh, but those are have been proven to be not uh, effective, not secure. Uh, so SHA-256 or SHA-384, that's 256-bit or 384-bit um, you know, message uh, hashing, the, the secure hash algorithm. So that's the, uh, that's the thing that you're going to want to look at for the Mac. So to kind of lay this all out in one uh, sort of a, um, representative cipher suite, what you're going to want to look for or what you're going to want to have included is ideally TLS 1.2, all right, for the protocol. And then for the key exchange, you're going to want elliptic curve, Diffie-Hellman, ephemeral, all right. And then for the uh, authentication, uh, ideally you have RSA. All right, and then, uh, and, and again, you could use ECDSA here. It's, that's kind of more of a uh, preference. From a security perspective, um, neither one, I'm gonna say, are, are completely insecure. It's more of a speed um, you know, decision to make there. Uh, and then next, for the block cipher, you want AES. I'm gonna say 128-bit plus. Um, so you could do the uh, you know, 128, 256. Uh, if you're looking at like the Qualys SSL, 
um, server you know, uh, test that you can run on your, on your web server. Uh, they look for 256 to get the 100% for the block cipher portion of that grade. Uh, 128, I think, gives you a 90% for that portion of the grade. So 128 is good, 256 is, is I guess, best. Uh, and then, uh, like I said before, you're going to want the Galois counter mode on that. And then the last thing I'll put, I'm going to kind of wrap around here just a little bit, is SHA. And I'll just say uh, 256 plus, all right? So either 256 or 384 for the, for the uh, hashing algorithm. All right, so that's, that's like a representative um, description of a very secure cipher suite. Uh, if you start getting into anything that's got mixes and matches of any of these others, certainly, you know, going back to the protocol, if it's got SSL v, v3 uh, or certainly v2, that's not good, that's very insecure. TLS 1.0, also I would stay away from. Um, and then I know we already talked about, you know, all the different details of all these other ones. Uh, one of the issues here is that you have to make a decision from a uh, web server configuration, or maybe in the F5 perspective, a, a, a big IP uh, configuration decision on who are your clients that are connecting to your web application. And if you've got some crazy outdated legacy clients, you may have a business decision to make where you're forced to respond to those clients and say, hey, I need to let them connect. Therefore, I'm gonna have to offer up uh, some very weak cipher suites so that they can come in. Um, if you don't have to do that, then you know, here's, the, here's kind of an outline of, uh, of what you could do to keep things really, really secure. So, uh, so hopefully this has been helpful to show you what to look for uh, and what to stay away from and why as you configure your Cypher Suites. So, uh, so thanks for hanging in there with us on this edition of Lightboard Lesson. Hey man, if you like this video, you can click right up here on our DC ball and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.